Satori Fund joins us now. Dan, I want to get to tech specifically. I want to start with Europe, especially given the Liz Truss news this morning. Um, is that in a way positive for the market because there's a sign that, you know, change is coming or is it additional volatility that affects all sorts of companies, including an IBM, which called out Europe as an area of concern, certainly for Q4 and perhaps in the next year? Well, I think you're you're right, John. I mean, when you guys had me on the last time, it was the day of that horrible CPI print. And what we said at the time, if you remember, and the market was down in the morning getting beat up, is that we think the month of October will finish up and the odds speak to the fact that it should be up about 3% or so, which is better than normal. Because there's a laundry list of things that are bad, including what was going on in the UK. And so if any of those things break in the positive direction, the UK, Russia, um, you know, China's zero COVID policies, you know, uh, liability-driven investment firms, you know, what happens with Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, if any of that stuff breaks positive, that's going to be good for the markets. And so to your point, you're seeing the pound strengthen this morning. You're seeing uh, gilts, uh, yields down a touch as well. Um, so the market's clearly taking this as a good sign that there's going to be a little bit more fiscal responsibility coming out of the UK. And so our belief is, is that the market continues to have this bear market rally that we've been calling for. Um, it continues at least until we see these mega caps report next week. Because a lot of them, I mean, they're down a lot, don't get me wrong, but, you know, they're down less than some of the other names that are down 75, 80 percent in the tech space. And so if you have an issue with one of them, because there's a lot of optimism going into all of those reports, for the most part, if you see yeah. something that's a little bit more Tesla-like versus a Netflix-like, you could have a big issue. And yet, Dan, I mean, when AT&T is up 9 percent on earnings, IBM up 4 not because things are, you know, not as bad as actually a raise, a beat and a raise from IBM on some stability. How is that not fundamentally good news and not just, you know, bare feet? Well, yeah, I mean, that's definitely good news. But remember, that's somewhat company specific in that IBM's in the first full year of their new mainframe cycle. And so IBM typically tends to do well. You look at IBM over the last decade, their revenue has done nothing but shrink. So I think you have to put that sort of in, in context. Nobody, no tech person says, oh, I just got to own IBM over the last decade, right? That's been Microsoft, Apple, Google, you know, the really love names, Tesla. And so you have a much different setup for expectations in that versus, you know, something else. I mean, we own Oracle somewhat for the same reason. We bought it back, I should say, this last week. Because our view is that, okay, you know, that's not, definitely not a name that's been loved. It's got a very low multiple, but they do seem to be actually gaining some momentum in terms of cloud infrastructure market share. So I think you have to uh, put this in context of if you're somebody that has very high expectations, you're at much greater risk of having your stock get clobbered off of earnings versus somebody like a Netflix where the stock was down 60% year to date going into this. And they put up good numbers, and the stock rightfully was up a fair bit. Um, and so I think you, you kind of need to separate that out um, right now. And, and don't get me wrong, we're, we have much more longs than we have shorts, again, because we were expecting a rally in October. But I think you have to get very specific within that on where you want to take that risk. I'd rather take risk in names that, you know, there's not a lot of high expectations going into this versus ones like an Apple or a Microsoft where the PE is much greater than the market. There's a lot of optimism going in, and there's a lot of reasons you could see them coming in and saying, well, you know, cloud infrastructure is slowing down a bit because Amazon sales over the second prime day weren't that strong. Or, you know, there was a big pandemic beneficiary in terms of smartphone sales, and that used to be just at the low end to mid range, and now we're seeing the consumer slow down at the high end, which to some degree you saw in Tesla's, you know, average revenue per car that they sold. So that's why we're being very careful into mega cap earnings next week, even though we have more longs than we do have shorts and we think the market's going to rally in October. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting, Dan. I wonder, you know, we're getting some uh, maybe 
little more dovish Fed speak at the margin. Uh, Non-farm payrolls estimates are 150 maybe. Uh, you got uh, Gunlock saying we're in a peak yield environment. Are you in a mood to say maybe that pivot that we've talked about for so long is not that far away? Well, I mean, here's the good thing about the way I try to run the fund. I'm not claiming to be smarter than the markets, but I do know that you get these bear market rallies. And so, Carl, to your point, if you think about mid-June, June 15th or so to mid-August, August 15th, the S&P was up 17 percent. And I'm sure you remember all the technicians you had on that were like, well, the market's never gone to new lows after it's up, retraced 50 percent and, you know, all these other stats you could trot out. And then the market went to new lows. And the reason is the <laughs> fundamentals keep getting worse. <laughs> so for me, it's I'm going to get long right now because I think based on all the statistics we have on markets, and we tweeted about this, you can go back and look. So this is not me saying this after the fact. We thought there would be a bear market rally. Yeah. But maybe this is the real thing. I don't think it is because mm. historically you need the Fed to stop raising rates for the market to find the bottom yeah. versus a bottom. But in the near term, I don't care. I'm long either way. I mean, yeah, you've been coming on and telling that your, us yourself, Dan, uh, over the last few months, over the last year. Um, when you say that you're getting cautious into the big cap uh, tech earnings next week, how much do you read into something like Jeff Bezos' tweet the other day where he said, you know, time to batten down the hatches, the probabilities of a recession, it's growing. Um, is that something that makes you more cautious on a name like Amazon? You absolutely have to be. I mean, we put out a tweet yesterday retweeting Jeff Bezos's tweet, and I don't typically retweet people, and because that's so important, because companies, when they, you know, and by the way, for those who haven't looked at that tweet, he retweeted what the Goldman Sachs CEO had to say about, you know, how tough the environment was going to be going forward. And Amazon's got a great picture, much like FedEx does, on the entire economy, because they ship so much stuff to so many people in so many regions across the globe. And if you look at the Prime Day numbers that they just reported, off the second prime day, they talked about 100 million units shipped over two days. The first prime day, there were 300 million sh units shipped over one day. So clearly it doesn't look, based on their own press releases, that the second prime day was nearly as strong as the first one. And so I look at that tweet and go, okay, most likely into their print, unless something changes, we'll probably be short the stock a little bit, or at very least not involved, because he's a very smart man and I'm not going to ignore something like that because he doesn't put out things like that very often. All right. Always good to get the bare necessities with you, Dan Niles. <laughs> Thank you. Uh,